Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. In just a few moments, we'll be joined here in the main interview room by Virginia head coach Tony Bennett. A few moments after that, we'll be joined by Kyle Guy and Ty Jerome, student athletes from Virginia. In addition to Coach Bennett, Coach Bennett will be here from 11.45 to 12.15. The student athletes arrive at 12.05 and remain here until 12.15. So Virginia availability in this room from 11.45 to 12.15. Virginia's starters will be available in the breakout areas from 12.20 to 12.40. So that continues after this session here in the main interview room. The Virginia starters will be available in the breakout areas at that time, 12.20 to 12.40. So all told today, Virginia availability 11.45 to 12.40. This afternoon, we'll have Texas Tech availability from 1.50 to 2.45, and we'll give you some details on that a little bit later. If you have any specific questions about that right now, you can come and ask me, I'll let you know. Satellite information for today's sessions are the same as it's been all week, same as, it's, as it will be uh, throughout the weekend and through tomorrow night's championship game. If you have any questions about those coordinates or any of that information, please see the ladies and gentlemen from Hammond Communications, they'll give that to you. A reminder, while joining us here in the main interview room, please take a moment right now to silence your cell phone. I'm gonna do the same. A reminder, no flash photography while joining us here in the main interview room. No video recording of any kind that includes professional news gathering, ENG cameras, mini cameras, uh, any handheld cameras of any kind, including your mobile phone. You can't record video in here to post later on social media or any other media outlet. You also can't go live on social media in this room at any time. During the breakout sessions, you're permitted to shoot video. You're permitted, I believe, to go live down there. Uh, during the locker room sessions, you can do that as well. Just not here in this main interview room. If you do need video or sound from today, again, check in with the folks at Hammond Communications about where you can connect through the malt boxes for video and for audio. Virginia head coach Tony Bennett is first. Hey, guys. And then we'll be joined by Kyle Guy and Ty Jerome, student athletes from Virginia. As soon as this session wraps up in here, the student athletes will head down to the breakout sessions and, and for the starters, and I believe the locker room is open for the non-starters. What's that? Are they all here? Yeah. Let's close up this door over here. Yeah, close. Thank you. Coach Bennett has arrived. Morning, Coach. How you doing? Good. We'll start with questions. We have a lot of questions, and we'll try to get through as many as possible over the course of the next half hour. Let's start to the left. We'll go with Dan and then David, and then we'll make our way through the room. Dan, let's get things started correctly. Dan Walken, USA Today. Uh, Tony, I'm right here, sorry. Um, obviously, your father's a big influence on your coaching career, but I'm just curious, coming from the NBA where you know teams score a lot of points, how did you decide that when you wanted to become a coach that you wanted to build a program around defense? I think um, I saw it, you know, as a player. I was fortunate to Green Bay where I played for my father. Um, it was a rebuilding situation so I was part of that as a player and I watched it even when I was in high school and then I observed him at Wisconsin when he when he went there and I think they'd only been to one NCAA tournament and I'm sorry uh, one NCAA tournament win in like it was like 40 years I don't want to misquote but it was it was an amazing stat um, and I, I saw him have to rebuild it in the Big Ten and how he did it and then the same thing at Washington State so to have that experience um, to know that defense can be a, an equalizer and, um, and use that as important. And I, I think at all levels, not many teams advance without being strong defensively, you know, even in the NBA. Um, and I knew that that's what I knew, and I, I, I've seen it work and be successful. And then it, you always continue to adjust your offense, but um, that's probably sealed it for me as I watched the success come and then even being under Coach Ryan for those two years. Um, those experiences watching good programs. 
Coach, we'll stay in that same part of the room. David from Newport News. Tony, staying on the defense theme, one of the least talked about aspects of your defense is block shots. As you reflected on last night getting nine, how essential were they and could they loom large again tomorrow night? Yeah, rim protection is so important. You know, the quickness of Auburn. Uh, and sometimes your defense just breaks down. So the ability for guys to either erase mistakes, and momity has been significant in that. And I know Texas Tech is, is excellent in that capacity too. Um, but that is when you can play good defense, but you have some length or shot blocking behind it, it just adds another element to uh, being harder to score against. So those were key plays, and they have been all year, whether it was you know someone coming from the weak side. Um, you know, over the years, you saw Isaiah do it, Darion Atkins and guys, so that's, that is important. Up front on the left, Coach, Ralph. Tony, Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. Um, your program has never been this far. Texas Tech has never been this far. It's a unique situation. I'm wondering how much of the challenge of building a program to get to this point is literally convincing players, coaches, the administration, that it can be done. The hierarchy of college basketball is just so established. Right. That was one of the things that drew me to um, have a chance to coach in the ACC because of the storied programs and, you know, the storied coaches, the Hall of Fame coaches. And can you go and take a team and build your program in a way that you think is best and compete against the best? And, you know, there's a way that I, I know works or I, that I believe works. So when you get in those spots, you hope, you have a vision and you hope, but you never truly know. You know, when you come in and say, this is going to happen, we're going to be a, you know, a, a Final Four team, or we're going to win the ACC, you believe it and you hope it, and then you just go to work. And that's, that's what it is. So, um, yes, everyone has the, the dreams and the goals, but it's, um, it's, it's, that's why we have a door knocker. You just keep knocking. And I say you never know when sometimes the door gets slammed in your face, but sometimes you get your foot in the door, your shoulder, and then you can bust through. And it's just a continual process. And again, having gone through that as a player and a coach, that was a, an incredible advantage for me. But it is, can you build a program to compete, compete against the best? And then, you know, how far can you push it? Having watched Wisconsin get to a Final Four, having seen other things, it, it gave me a a blueprint, and then you also add to that. Left side, second row, Jeff. Hey, Tony, several of your colleagues back at UVA have won NCAA titles in their sports. What's the response been from your fellow coaches during this run? Do you hear a lot from them, or because they know you're busy, have they backed up? Yeah, they, you can tell those have been through that. Great job. No need to reply on the text message, because it's like, you know, the, the hundreds come in, um, so they've been through it. but. Uh, the support you have, the Debbie Ryan when she was there, uh, Joanne Boyle from the women's program, and now Tina, Brian O'Connor, Coach Arenas, um, all down the list, I, I can name them all, all the coaches. It's a close-knit family at UVA because I think we appreciate um, how it has to be done there. But there's so many great coaches there. And um, I remember when I got the job and said, what's the key to building the program? And I listened to them intently about finding guys that fit you know, your system, your culture, and the culture of uh, UVA. Third row on the left. Tony, uh, Sean Gregory from Time Magazine. Um, on Ty, um, before you secured his commitment, why do you think he, could you just uh, describe why you think he flew under the radar a little bit as a recruit? He grew a little bit. Um, you know, he, you look at him and he's not the most intimidating looking guy athletically. You know, you say, well, is he quick enough? Can he do things? Um, so I think, did he pass the eye test? Perhaps not you know, for some of the high majors, and, and it was early, but sometimes you have to go with your gut. I've been fortunate. I think when I had a coach at Washington State, we had to trust our gut. Sometimes you get it right, sometimes you don't, but you had to say, I think I see it in him, and, and, it, and not be afraid to get those guys, because if guys are mentally tough and, of course, have the courage and the heart, um, maybe in certain areas that can be lacking. I mean, there has to be a minimum level of athleticism or whatever it is, um, but if you see that, those guys have usually just, they just take off. Most of our guys who haven't been the most highly touted recruiting wise when I've been at Washington State and now here have just blossomed. Joe Harris, uh, even Malcolm Brogdon, you know, not, not a lot. And I can go down London Parentis, I just can go down the list. And those are great stories. It's just something in them. But, but I think maybe that was part of it. And, um, you know, he's obviously just kept going. And there's something in him that is so special. 
Coach, we're going to move to the right side. Aaron first, then Nancy. Aaron Beard with the AP. Um, Kyle's been very open about his battles to manage anxiety, to kind of keep himself from getting overpressured. I'm curious how you maybe helped him get through some of that and what stood out to you about the way he handled those issues to get to where he yeah. is now. The best thing I can do for Kyle is, is I pray for him a lot. I do, um, and I'm there for him. Um, everyone, we have a saying, uh, be kind, because everyone you meet is facing a hard battle. And, um, you know, some things you have to work through with yourself and, and the right kind of help, and he's very honest about it. But uh, I try to encourage him and challenge him in ways and, and be there for him, coach him hard. But um, we always talk about encouragement, and also accountability, you know, being that way with him. But um, I constantly think about him. And for all my guys, that's, that's one of the fortunate things. You're kind of a, you know, it's an extended family, so you are a, a father figure to an extent to them. And um, I think about that stuff, and I do that for me. That's really important for him. So that's probably the best thing I could say I did. And then um, we're together in this journey. I mean, that's the one thing you, you talk about being able to go through the highs and lows together. And we've We've had some, I mentioned the times we've been on up here together in tough situations and then uh, watching him grow through it. And um, just again, thankful that he was entrusted to me for this time. And that's why you want to be a good steward when you have him for the time you get him. Nancy. Nancy Emery, USA Today Sports. Tony, you guys have heard ad nauseum this year about the UMBC loss. Mm -hmm. How gratifying is it to then be in this position? And is there some kind of, I don't know, karmic payback that you went <laughs> from that to where you are now? Yeah, uh, like I told you, I'm just really grateful and thankful. Um, you know, uh, heard about it a lot. We knew that. And um, as I mentioned, it, I feel like I repeat myself too much. In a way, it's a painful gift. Like, it, it did draw us near to each other as a team. I think it helped us as coaches. I think it helped the players uh, on the court and it helped us in the other areas that, you know, rely on things that were significant. But, um, you know, I, I, I think that karmic payback I, I don't know I just like I said this journey is I knew it was going to be a significant year in all of our lives I knew that going into this year because of what was going to be coming at us because of that from a basketball standpoint so I, I just knew we needed each other and uh, I, everything was pretty intentional about this year and how we're going and did I know we were going to be in this spot after last year and you know say what a difference a year makes I didn't but um but I knew it was going to be a, a really important marked year for all of us in our lives and it's certainly playing out that way to the right of the aisle gene hey tony gene wong washington post sort of a follow-up to that how much of a believer are you now and maybe destiny fate whatever you want to call it given how the last couple of games have gone you've kind of emerged from some improbable situations yeah. and to be on the brink of playing for a national championship yeah i mean um you know, again I, I believe our steps are ordered i think you know you you walk and you do everything you can with the abilities you've been given as players, as coaches, um, and then you trust. Um, and um, I, I just, I believe that. So um, the fact that we're here, um, yeah, I, I think, like I said, there's been a hand in this and I'd be, in my life, I'd be foolish not to believe that. On the right side, a little further back, Mike. Hey, Tony, Mike Barber, Richmond Times-Dispatch. I wanted to ask you specifically about this matchup. Do you see similarities in the way Texas Tech defends? Uh, and then big picture, do you feel any sense of vindication after so many years of people saying this system won't get you here, that there's two teams that pride themselves on defense playing for the championship? Um, well, first, defensively, Texas Tech, um, no, they're different than us. They're, they're really special. Uh, they, defensively, I the utmost respect for how they play. Um, but it, it is a different system. And um, I think someone said statistically we're two of the top five or teams defensively. Um, you can see it. They're, they're very physical. Their ability to take your ball and some of the, just look at the games and the tournament, what they've done to some of the great offensive teams has been, you know, um, so impressive. So, uh, but there's some different things. I mean, we work and there's the similarities of what we value, but it's, it's sort of different. In that regard, they'll switch. They'll do. They they got some different things they do in it. Um, as far as vindication or people saying that, I no, I, um, not that doesn't matter to me. It doesn't. On the right side toward the back, Joe, raise your hand for us, Joe. Hi, Tony. Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, DeAndre had a, a very good second half yeah. last night, but it had been kind of in a bit of a funk or whatever you want to call it. Uh, 
are you concerned that he was pressing? At, or how do you feel he's been playing, and, and especially coming back in the second half last night? Yeah, I was really impressed with how he responded in that second half. Um, you know, and he, he, even in the Purdue game, he had made two big free throws and made the, the basket to seal it. Um, you know, he's always defending, and we're always, you know, I just keep challenging him. I think he's, again, he's just scratching the surface of what he's going to become. But, um, you know, who knows? It, it's, it's intense. I mean, the, the physicality goes up, the pace, everything, when you get in these settings. And um, he, he really stepped up when we needed it in that second half. And I know we're going to need it, obviously, tomorrow. And, uh, again, I think he's hard on himself. He's missing shots or not helping his team. I think he, he puts a lot on himself. And we talked about it. Be free, man. Go after this. We need you. Be a player. If the shot's not going or whatever, impact the game in other ways. And that's, that's kind of what we talked about. And I thought he, he took a step for sure in that game. Toward the front, to the right of the center aisle. Uh, pardon the cliche, but at what point in your mind did Mamadi become a primetime player? Yeah, um, well, I, He's shown flashes of that this year, and there have certainly been stretches, and he's been real consistent, um, you know, since the NCAA tournament has started for these five games, and uh, but definitely in stretches before, and it's just kind of being consistent with it. Uh, some of it was staying out of foul trouble. Some of it was me probably giving him more opportunities. I think it's, it's all of those things, but uh, his, his impact has been significant in this run, without a doubt. Second row, Paul. Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch. Tony, as far back as ACC Media Day, you had said that you you really wanted to get to the Final Four. You really wanted to win a national championship. Yeah. But if you didn't, you'd been through the worst and you uh, had come through that and survived it. Um, in the back of your mind, I know that you. In the front of your mind, I know that you want to win a national championship. In the back of your mind, are you? Oh, not thinking, but aware that if things don't work out tomorrow night, you still have that foundation and you'll still be able to handle it. Well, let's clarify something. I've been through the worst basketball-wise, okay? Let's keep this in perspective. And, and yeah, it's hard and we grew from it, but yeah, understand, and that's the one thing, there's going to be, that people go through so many hard things, um, and I, I understand that. Um, but um, to answer your question or your, your statement, yes. Left of the aisle. Thank you, Mark. You're doing yeoman's work up there. <laughs> Tony, Aaron McFarling Roman. with the Roanoke Times. Uh, Tony, I understand it was your idea to do the uh, whitewater rafting trip, yeah. to choose that. Why, why did you choose that activity in particular for the team building exercise? And, and was there anything that you learned about your group mm -hmm. dynamics that maybe you didn't know going into that trip? Because it's a blast. Have you ever been whitewater rafting? I mean, come on. <laughs> That's... And, and some of our guys were scared to death, so it was even more fun for me to watch them be scared to death. And the, it was the highest point of the rapids, so, and we had, our guys' eyes were big. You know, we had a big, um, Dre, I can't remember some of them, I call him up, but uh, it's going to be okay, you know, but um, no, we just wanted to have a blast. Look, that was the summer, uh, we had worked out hard, and I said, let's do something. We had a little miniature golf tournament, we went to, um, I can't remember, somewhere in West Virginia the night before. And I just, again, everything was about let's enjoy this, let's have fun. And it was ironic, you know, when we got here to Minneapolis, they gave us a paddle that when we got off the plane, it said the road ends here. And before the, um, the Purdue game, I told our guys, I just went through some experiences that I observed and, and uh, how powerful it was. I said, but, but one that stands out is when we were on our whitewater rafting trip, kind of the first thing we did after our summer workouts. And literally, they had it. They they tip the boat on purpose, so you jump, and you float down the river. It's one of the oldest rivers they say in the world, if you can believe that, where we were um, rafting. And I remember floating down the river, and you're you're up, and you're just going. And I remember saying to myself, "Okay, all right, Lord, what's this year going to bring?" I wonder. I remember just like it was the most beautiful setting, just floating down the river with these guys. And I remember saying that in my mind, and I relayed that to them before the Purdue game, and I said. And I actually got a little emotional to him. I said, here we are. This was on the verge of the Elite Eight game. I said, I'm floating down that river, wondering here, you know, what's this year going to bring? Because it's a significant year. I thought that. And I was thinking, wow, here I am. And then interesting, we come to uh, Minneapolis, and the first thing they give us are these, these uh, paddles or oars that say um, the road ends here. So it was kind of significant or a poignant moment for me.
That same area, one row back on the left. Tony, Adam Winkler, CBS out of Norfolk, Virginia Beach. I want to ask you about tomorrow, uh, another <laughs> late tip. What's your day going to be like? What's the routine? And also, uh, you've used the TED Talks. You've used Friday Night Lights. Uh, do you have another bullet left in the chamber <laughs> pre-national championships? Uh, um, I think we played Oregon at about 10.30. That was a late one. We played some, some late games. Um, you know, you just you push everything back. You keep your routine the same. And, um, you know, we have something we do um, at the hotel. So, I mean, I, I don't know if I have another TED Talk or anything. I have to ask my wife. She's the one who gave me the TED Talk back. She was actually at that TED Talk. I think, Paul, you talked to her about it. And, um, and then that was five years before this. And then after we lost, she's the one who told me. But um, we'll think of something. But it'll, you know, said it'll be a joy to get ready for this game. To the right of the center aisle. Coach uh, Jermaine Farrell with uh, WFXR, Fox Philly in Roanoke, Virginia. First of all, I'd like to say I appreciate your spirit, spirit, spirituality yeah. and faith. It's awesome and a blessing. i got to ask you, uh, what's it like for you personally to see a lot of these programs and schools adopt your defensive person, uh, personality and everything like that and what you do with your program? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many do. I, Texas Tech, they do something different, and that, that was poured into Coach Beard and uh, Coach Adams, and he was under Coach Knight. Coach Knight influenced my father. Um, but um, I think, you know, as far as our pack defense that some programs use, I think my father established that when he was at Green Bay, and, and other people probably even did it before him. Um, I think people just are always looking for ways to, to um, how, how can we close the gap against teams that are so talented. And I think, as I mentioned to Dan, I, I think it was who asked the question, I got your attention now. You looked up. Stop texting while we're doing this thing here. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. But um, defense can be a great equalizer. So you know it. You play against all different kinds of systems. And the game is, that's the beauty of the game. People put their own, own little twist on it. But um, I, I think, you know, from a basketball standpoint, it's one of the best legacies I think my father left. There's his, his, those five pillars that we, many teams have adopted. But, you know, that defensive system. On the right side, Mike. Uh, Tony, Tony Mike Lepresti, NCAA.com. You've been very open talking about some really important things that have happened in the last year, like faith and family and relationships, sort of an outgrowth from the UMBC game. Are you amazed at all that the impact and the changes in important areas that have come from one basketball game? Well, um, I go back to, and I talked to these guys the other day, um, this is this has been going for, this is my 10th year. This has been a process for 10 years. I've, I've been humbled so many times in this game uh, as a head coach. Um, and I shared that with these guys um, when we got, we played in the ACC tournament my second year and we were up 10 points with 42 seconds and got beat in overtime by Miami. We got to the Elite Eight, it was a great year and lost that. And then obviously those experiences. And the one thing I, I told them, and again, I, I use, scripture and I understand everybody's at different places but I told them one of the things that we talked about is don't grow weary in doing good for at the due time you'll reap a harvest you'll do it and that's what these guys they've been so faithful this year and that has brought so much joy to me and the players I've been under when they faced adversity in a basketball sense I'm not talking a, a worldly sense a basketball sense they haven't grown weary in in doing the right stuff and that's that's not just been from one game, but yeah, that was a significant game, and I knew the light would shine on them, and how they responded would have an impact, but this has been going, um, this is life, it really is, but this is the basketball thing, so. We're joined now by Kyle Guy and Ty Jerome. We'll take questions for the next 10 minutes for the student athletes and for Coach Bennett. All the way in the back on the right side, Matt. Matt Norlander, CBS Sports, Tony right here. Um, Texas Tech has the number one rated defense in college basketball points per possession. It's actually historically tracking to be the, the toughest defense in college basketball in the past two decades. So with that in mind, given you and your staff and your program's history of, of being a top five defense year over year over year, how much of a benefit will that be? Do you expect going into tomorrow's game, given that the guys going up A team playing B team have not faced the exact same scheme, but have, have encountered uh, such stifling defense uh, from within the league and within the, within the team? I think when you try to play hard defense, you understand um, the value of um, offensively, how, how mentally tough you have to be, how sound you have to be, um, and you, know, you have to take what the defense gives you, but it's a challenge. When our defense is at its best, it really makes people work to get contested shots. Obviously, Texas Tech, you know, in their own way, they make people work and they swarm, so understanding that, 
Um, you know, not just saying, oh, they haven't seen our offense. Yeah, they've seen offenses before. So does you, that would be false confidence. But understand, and hey, it takes hard, tough offense, and you work to get quality shots, and then you turn around and play it the same way against them. We'll go up front to the right. Chris from St. Paul, and if this question isn't for the student athletes, we'll take the next one for the student athletes. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, Chris Thomas in St. Paul Pioneer Press. I'll, I'll ask Tony this, and then maybe Kyle can also answer it. Uh, you've played Tony, obviously, at the highest level. What does it take for a guy like Kyle to step up and have that ability to perform under pressure, hitting those three free throws with 70,000 fans and the, the nation looking on? And then even before that, if he doesn't hit that three-pointer yeah. in, in pressure, you, you know, doesn't even get to that stage. What does it take to yeah. have that ability to perform under pressure? And then maybe, Kyle, could you talk about sure. maybe your ability to perform under pressure? Well, I, I've been fortunate to watch both of these two young men, Ty and Kyle, over their years uh, do that in different settings and pressure settings. Obviously, in, in that setting, you know, in the college basketball world, that was as big as it gets. But um, it, it doesn't surprise me. I think it just takes um, – to be in the moment, um, you know, there's a saying, the art of doing what you're doing and not getting too lost in it. I think I was sitting next to Kyle, he said, I just put, you know, my jersey in my face to focus um, before he went there. And um, no, it, it takes, takes, takes this and takes this. And that's what he showed and that's what Ty has shown since I've seen these guys from little guys on up to, to young men. They have it both. They got it, they got it in both places, which is everything. Kyle. Yeah, I think, um, you know, for me and probably every basketball player, everyone's uh, envisioned themselves, you know, uh, winning a game um, on this stage. Um, you know, like you said, I, you know, just tried to get in my own zone and, and focus in. And, um, you know, I knew that my teammates had confidence in me and that gives me more confidence than, than I'll ever be able to give to myself. Up front on the left side. Riley Garney, SB Nation. Um, for the players, Frank, you mentioned starting with the North Carolina game, you changed up the road trip stuff a little bit. For didn't do shoot around, added a main Neptune friendly competition. How have those things benefited you at this point, having done that on the road and done the team building and coach at just the end? If you could add something about the drive for doing that instead of the normal. So Ty first, then Kyle, then coach. Yeah, um, I think it was um, because we wanted to get off our feet more because <laughs> from that Carolina game, you know, we were coming off Duke two days before so they wanted us to get off our feet as much as possible and get as much rest and then you know Frankie started playing the piano and he's so talented in that so I think coach just selfishly wants to hear him play um, <laughs> no but we've been uh, doing so many team bonding activities since my first year here and um, this group is as close to the team I've, I've ever been on in my whole life and that's what makes us so special Kyle yeah the past two years um, you know, those teams have been so close and, and Ty's right. We've done so many team bonding um, exercises with coach and then with ourselves. We play cards all the time and, um, you know, I couldn't be happier for, for, for our team and, and what we've accomplished so far, but we still have one more. Yeah, same thing I said about the whitewater rafting trip. It's fun, you know what I mean? Like, and it was, we, we still do a walk through. We do sometimes, you know, guys will shoot, but we do our stuff, but then it's just to, just come together and have some fun, and we've done a bunch of different things, um, and just enjoy that time, and then get ready to play again. I think there has to be a balance to it, and it, it, um, just have a good time with it. Back to the room on the right side, Mike. Uh, this is for Tony. The players can answer a similar question. Tony, how has it helped you as a head coach to have been an NBA player? And guys, you can answer perhaps if he mentions that much to you uh, during the course of your conversations, coach, and that sort of thing. Uh, I think every experience you have as a player is invaluable. And a lot of times I'll rely on these guys. Like I know, hey, what are you seeing out there? And they'll, and I trust what they have to say because I trust their feel and their, you know, understanding of the game. Um, I, sometimes in recruiting, you can say, hey, I've walk the path you guys want to go. I mean, I wasn't, I, listen, I, I played about 15, 13 minutes a game. I was a backup point guard. So I wasn't, I, I don't pretend like I was this big time player, but I, but I was in the rotation and I played. So I think that helps guys say, hey, um, I had to work my way to get there. So I think maybe in some ways, recruiting wise, it helps. And then just things I learned from watching. I mean, when you play against Michael Jordan 15 times in your career and get to play in the playoffs and go against the players, 
there's just stuff you figure out. Muggsy Bogues, I got asked that. Well, what did you see in Kihei? Well, I saw, you know, Muggsy Bogues live it out, you know, in person for three years, and then you, you just, those things you see. So all that stuff helps. But, um, you know, I, I have some good relationships with some NBA people so I can learn and get ideas from, and I think maybe that stuff helps. I hope I don't talk about it too much in front of you guys because that would not be good. <laughs> no, yeah, I was just, just going to say he doesn't really, you know, talk about himself at all. He's so humble and genuine. And um, the only thing he really mentions about the NBA is, again, the Muggsy, the Kihei uh, comparison. And then, um, you know, anything that he learned that could help the team, it's never about him. And, you know, that's why he's such a great leader. Just a few more minutes, and then we'll have student availability in the breakout sessions as well, up front to the right. Hey guys, Laura Rutledge, ESPN, and this is for everybody, if you guys can all answer this. If you actually visualize yourself cutting down the nets tomorrow night, what would that mean to you? Ty, can you take that first, please? Um, I feel like you gotta ask me that tomorrow night. Um, it's it's, it's going to be, I mean, we know what we're in for. We know how good Texas Tech is. Um, so we know it's going to be a dog fight. And, uh, you know, Coach always says the joy is in the, the, joy is in the competition. Um, so we're most excited to just get out there and compete. And, you know, we would love to cut down the nets. And I'm, I, I can't, I'll probably be speechless if we're able to do it. And I'm sure it'll mean the world to me. It's what every kid works so hard for. It's what we put in all the work for. But, um, you know, like Coach always says, the joy is in the competition. Yeah, I, um, both teams have probably envisioned it. Um, every player are, and coach on every team have, has envisioned it, I'm sure. But I think it's important to, you know, realize that you don't get to skip the game and just go down and cut the nets. Uh, we got to focus on what's in front of us. We got practice today, uh, a little bit more, more media, I think, um, and um, just focus up. We're, we're in for a battle, and we're excited. Center of the room. Zach Gerlis, Augusta Free Press. For Ty and for Kyle, what's the first NCAA tournament final you guys remember watching growing up? And then has it hit you yet, or when did it hit you that you guys were going to be on that stage? Ty first, please, then Kyle. Um, I don't remember exactly the order of all the finals I've watched, um, but I vividly remember watching Mario Chalmers hit that shot. Um, and. I was supposed to be asleep. I remember my mom kept coming to my room and telling me to shut the TV off because, you know, it was a 9 o'clock game, uh, Eastern time, and I was trying to watch it and stay up. And then the game went to overtime. So, no, it was um, – being on this stage is incredible. Um, it's everything I've dreamed of and more. And um, just being with this group of guys and this coaching staff makes it, you know, all that, all that much better. Kyle. Yeah, I was uh, obviously listening to my parents more. I was asleep when Mario Chalmers hit the, hit the shot. I can't believe you had a TV in your room. That's what I'm still thinking about. <laughs> but um, I made sure, I told my stepdad, I said, if it's close, wake me up. So he, he woke me up, and we watched that together. Um, but then probably, um, I don't know, 2007 or eight with uh, Odin and Conley. Obviously, they, they grew up close to me, so I was rooting for them. Um, and they, they fell short, but those are probably two memories uh, the most. Let's finish up in the back of the room with David. Tony, David Teal from Newport News. Just reflecting on what Kyle did last night, what were the most pressurized free throws you ever took as a player, either at Green Bay or in yeah. the NBA or in high school? Well, I, there's been a bunch of them, but I got a kind of a funny story. I, I got fouled, and we were maybe down two. This is at Green Bay when I played there. I think we were up down one or down two. And I went to the line, and for some reason, before I went to the line, I just looked back over my shoulder because I knew where my mom sat. And when I looked at my mom, she was like this. <laughs> she had her hands in her face, her face in her head. I was like, oh, great. And I remember making them, and I gave her the business ever since. And I'm like, thanks, Mom. You're supposed to believe in your son. But she, she wasn't looking, so I probably shouldn't have looked. I hope your mom wasn't do that and you didn't look at her. So. <laughs> We'd like to thank Coach Bennett, Kyle Guy, and Ty Jerome for joining us here in the main interview room. Kyle and Ty are going to head down to the breakout sessions right now. They're going to be available with the Virginia starters. There's also Virginia student-athlete locker room availability from 1 to 1.30. Coach Bennett's headed on to other media obligations this afternoon. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you later on.